In today's video, I would like to discuss what is concurrent training and what's the interference effect. So con concurrent training, it basically means when we're training um, two different qualities, so we have uh, aerobic and anaerobic on one side. So the aerobic one is going to be our, our endurance, so our um, repeated or sustained efforts. And then our anaerobic qualities would be our maximum stuff like maximum strength, power, speed, and whatever it might be. Um, so apart from concurrent training, we have an interference effect when we do it. So what's the interference effect? So basically, if you're training the two different qualities at the same uh, time, we're pulling the, the body in two opposing ways. For example, you're going on straight, you can make a turn to the left, you can make a turn to the right. If somebody is, is calling you from two different ways, you have to choose where to go. If they keep on calling you, you just stay at the same spot and you wouldn't go anywhere, you wouldn't improve. You have to make a choice where, where to go. So in uh, pretty much all cases, when we're combining, uh, when, when we're combining uh, maximal effort stuff like sprint, speed, power and strength, we can combine that with uh, long distance endurance stuff. Our body favors the uh, the oxidative and the aerobic qualities more, which means if we train um, uh, if we train concurrently aerobic and aerobic qualities, our body always favors the aerobic conditions more. Uh, we're not really sure why this is happening, why the body prefers this way, but it just happens, you know. Um, so why is important? It's important because pretty much most of the sports they rely on both qualities up to a certain degree. So there are very few sports that require only maximal uh, sprints or just long distance uh, endurance component. For example, we're talking about uh, martial arts, depending on the style of the athlete, let's say in MMA, or what is their background, or, or how, how are they aggressive, aggressive what's their um, their plan for the fight, they might require different uh, different qualities. So in let's say in MMA, if we're talking about that, somebody who is relying on one on only one shot, one shot KO, one left hook, boom, and the match is done. So if you have a look at Francis and Gano, that's that's what he does. Um, he finishes the match in one minute. So he doesn't really require a lot of oxidative, a lot of aerobic endurance uh, because he finishes people so fast. But there is a problem that if he, if he can't finish the people fast uh, in the match, it's going to be a prolonged match. He won't have the necessary endurance that he requires and he won't be able to win. So there is, a, there is always a trade-off between how much is your maximal output and how much you can sustain. Okay. So if you have very low uh, aerobic endurance, we have very uh, high maximum output, you can do this, but not for a very long period of time. So eventually you're going to gas out and you won't be able to do, to do much. And then on the other side, if you have the opposite way around, if your maximum power output is low and your aerobic um, endurance is high, you can go all day long. But you're never going to be able to uh, to knock somebody out, you know, because you won't have uh, the actual required strength and power qualities that you need for the sport. So if you're normally doing more grappling or um, you may be trying to win by by points, you probably going to require a bit more of a, a bit more of a aerobic endurance because you have to repeat your efforts for longer periods of time. Okay, so let's say if the match is like 25 minutes, so we have five rounds of five minutes, you definitely need a lot of uh, aerobic endurance. So you can maintain the tempo, you can maintain the pace throughout the whole 25 minutes. Okay, that's why it's very important. And then based on that, it's important because we have to train pretty much all the, all the, all the, the qualities. So we said already that if we train everything at the same time, we wouldn't go anywhere. If you have to choose what you go to, to go left or right, if you just stay at the center in the, middle, in, the, in the middle, you aren't making any progress at all, which is very bad for you because you're wasting your time and you're not efficient with your training, you're not getting optimal uh, results.
Okay, so how can we actually um, manage the interference effect in concurrent training? The first way to do it is to have a very good plan how to train in the next few weeks, next few months. So we have uh, some periods or blocks where we can emphasize different physiological qualities so we don't get this interference effect. Typically, the uh, um, their um, physical, physiological qualities that are, that are, that are compatible um, and some which are not compatible. So for example, what is not compatible, um, speed and power are not compatible with, with aerobic endurance. However, maximal strength, hypertrophy and muscular endurance, they are compatible, or at least they suffer less from the interference effect when they're combined with, uh, with aerobic training, with endurance training, okay? So that's the first way. We have to have a very good plan on how we can train the next few months. Then the second uh, method, which is a bit more of a short term. So if you are to do concurrent training, we must make sure that we have decent amount of rest between the training sessions when we're addressing um, aerobic and anaerobic components. The best way to do it probably is to do one day of um, of your anaerobic stuff, a second day of your aerobic stuff. Let's say Monday you're doing more maximum strength and power, then on Tuesday you're doing long distance running or some more um, aerobic endurance training, depending on the uh, method you're using, the different methods, but now I'm just talking more about the qualities. This is the best way to do it, so you have more than 24 hours of rest between the sessions. Then the second best way to do it is if you're training on the same day aerobic and anaerobic qualities so you do one in the morning you do one at the evening so in the morning you do your high intensity stuff like sprinting um crawling weightlifting and at the evening you can do your cycling your like running whatever method you want to to build your uh, your aerobic endurance then the third way the third best way if you can't separate uh, the sessions in a day, you have to do both for the same day. What you can do, uh, typically the best method is first to emphasize early in the session strength and power or speed and then finish off with your energy system to work with your conditioning. If you do the other way around, if you do first uh, first conditioning, energy system training, your, your um, aerobic endurance, follow by your strength, speed and power, you would have a massive or a bit or at least a larger interference effect and you won't be able to achieve much. So first focus on your strength, speed and power and get it done and then finish off with your, with your conditioning at the end. That's when the interference effect is less. Okay? And then the last tip I want to tell you guys is depending on your mode, on your method of uh, doing your energy system training, your, your, your conditioning, you might want to do, let's say you have options of doing um, cycling or jogging, running. There's evidence to suggest that cycling uh, shows less interference effect compared to jogging, running. Okay, so what, what does that mean? It means that if your sport doesn't require any, any running at all, you probably shouldn't run. Because if you do running, you have larger interference effects. Okay, so for example, for a... Uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu athlete or for MA fighter, obviously you don't need the quality, the skill of running. So I wouldn't use running as a, as a modality to improve my conditioning. I would use cycling as there is less concurrent training effect. But obviously if your uh, sports require running, like rugby, football, uh, American football, basketball, I would use probably um, um, some running as method, as a form of conditioning to improve your, your aerobic qualities. So again, it depends on the sport, um, on the style, on the tactics, and what the person actually needs. So then you can choose your methods and modalities of training. So again, I said this is important guys, because you have to train different qualities at the same time so you can improve. So depending on your style and your sport, what the demands of the sport, you might need more strength power work or you might need more your long distance endurance aerobic training and so on. 
So I hope that you have found this information useful. If you have any questions, if you need any more help with sorting out your training, like what phases, what uh, qualities to emphasize, how to how to plan and structure your training after the week or day in, day out, let me know guys. I'll be happy to help and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.